Hello everyone, today I want to make a quick video just covering some interesting unused content from older versions of Deception. No specific older version because I think the making of this went from different versions because of some sort of just doesn't really align, but not that really matters. Um, yeah, this is a MK Deception Eye Guide. It's a fit, look, it's an official thing, official DVD thing. Um, I got to see this is a general rundown of everything of note, every, every, everything that was shown that isn't in the final thing. So, this isn't covering the entire guide. I don't have access to the full thing, I just know. The, the details, right? And I feel I can pile it in this video. So yeah, let's get into it. The first thing to cover is this theft trap. Completely unused. This is the most notable thing to come from this. It's the only footage out there of it. I made a video before showing this clip. Yeah, it's, it turns out there's a third layer. So the dragon mountain is safe. You knock down a layer. And if you break through the walls in the second layer, it triggers a death trap. Now, according to a Mesa, this wasn't removed, it's still there. It's still completely there. Like the death trap line, the DMK and everything's there. It just doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? No one knows. Can it be fixed? Probably, but no one knows how. So, we're stuck with a bugged version of this stage. And it was just never fixed. And I, don't, I, I don't get it. Because it wasn't removed. I don't know why it would be removed. It, it, it's a very weird bit of missing content. And I don't know why it's gone. It feels like a waste of this very cool third layer. Hell, if it was just a stage transition down to the third platform, that would be fine as well. Like, it, it does feel like a waste because the Dragon Man is very cool. And I feel there's a lot of potential with the stage. And when you actually play it, it's one of the least interactive ones but like the idea of you you go down the layers and watch the second one you get knocked all the way down that is like the sky temple and the sky temple works really fucking well so this would have been a very a very good thing to include for this stage i don't know why it's gone but yeah that's a fun little thing there that's the most notable thing really but there's a lot of other stuff to cover Next, I've got some minor chest come out things. Well, there's one big one, but this is the small stuff. So, the spells menu was different, had different fonts and stuff. All the spells themselves are the same, no, so nothing crazy there. Lee May, and, and this was already knowledge based on trailers and stuff, and the E3 version of the game, which is why I think some of this footage from the E3 version, the rest of it is from a, a bit of a more recent one. Um, but yeah, the, her alt was a primary, which I don't think they should have changed because the alt is much better. Um, not that it really matters at the end of the day. But it does mean that, like, in chess combat, you would have had Lee Mei in this costume, basically. And also she had the, the Beiji Quan fighting style from Dead Alliance, which I presume they changed because it's a fucking useless style. <laughs> Likewise, Hotaro had a different style here. I'm not actually sure what it is. This pose comes right after a stage transition, but the, the footage doesn't really have him on the ground in this style much. It might be Hapkido. I mean, we might just swap the Scorpion styles around because they wanted Scorpion to keep Hapkido. It might be Wing Chun. I'm not exactly sure. I don't think it's a new style. I just think it's a slightly odd pose just due to the uh, the, the, the screenshot. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what this is, but it's definitely not what normally had before. And there's plenty of differences. Like this. I mean, there's gameplay trailers where I think Lee May has the morning star. Like, so it might be someone else, but someone has the morning star that isn't Havoc. So there's a lot of weird stars that get changed around. I know Armageddon's E3 version had a ton of stuff that was different. So it is interesting. I think this is pretty crazy. The chess comment stage working out have like um you know the checkered tile floors. 
I presume specifically for chess combat, and then you'd have the normal versions for arcade. And I think that's neat. I don't really mind its exclusion, because it does look silly, but it, it, it's cool to see. Also, they all have like in-game renders that have the checkered draws, so I guess this wasn't just for marketing. I guess this is what they were actually going to look like, but they changed it. Speaking of stage renders, this is one of Quanchi's Fortress. It's really dark, you can tell because I've got the spider web lasers below it, but also you've got like regular webbing or just white webbing on the regular platforms. And because it's pretty neat, I don't know if this was going to be like a, a newer version of the fortress because I mean, Quanchi's gone, right? He's gone in this game. Maybe they were going to do a different version, they're going to change how it looks. I don't know, that's pure speculation. But this is definitely a new find. I just don't really know what's going on here. Pretty cool nonetheless. That's render here. I don't I, I don't know if this is actually new. This might be taken from the deception intro, but that that's another Raiden for you. It it's only red because of the, the eye guide theme. Guys, if you want to survive in mortal combat, don't get jaded. So a few things there. I had the audio on for that because that was the Onaga announcer, which we've known it existed. We've known that Max Crawford, who voiced Onaga, of course, is also the, the voice for uh, techie stuff, whatever. Um, I modified it. That was going to be the announcer. Um, and then they changed it. Now, the strange thing with the, the fudge in this high guide is Sometimes you have the newer announcer, sometimes you have the old one. So that's why I feel like this was made between different versions. It started off with the older E3 build, and then it sort of... They got, you know, a, a newer version that was more up-to-date. Also, Jade Staff here. It's a different model. It's just, you know, regular grey stuff. I don't know if that means it was unfinished, or if it's just going to be like her, her classic staff. Um, obviously in Deception itself, it, it's got extra bits to it, it's not just a regular pole. So that's another thing there. See, this is the old announcer, and here's a new Death Trap. Well, not a new one, but a variation of it. Instead of the, the knockdown thing, you know, that's actually the Falling Cliffs falling animation, so they just sort of fall into the water. I suppose it's more realistic, but yeah, I don't think it's as cool as just getting it's thrown into the into the uh, ocean, so I'm fine with it being changed. But Onaga can do the same thing right back to you. Prevention is simple: don't use combos. They don't work. I just thought it'd be funny to include because that's the fucking worst advice I've ever heard. Imagine spending money for this guide. And it tells you, don't use combos on Onaga. How do you expect to beat him? The entire strategy of being Onaga is do your longest style branch combo string. You know, your longest grounded string. And you're just pressing single buttons. You're not doing, you're not doing shit to him. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know where the script comes from. I don't know if it's like midway time to do this or what. I don't know where they get their strategy as guide for. I don't know how they come up with ideas on advice to give, but that's just completely wrong. It, it feels like they had an idea on like special moves are better against an I know Liu Kang, like seemingly intentionally, because he's a secret character, has, his bicycle kick does way more damage than of Naga. It's still not an optimal way to beat him, but uh, I suppose the idea was that's like, oh, that's a very strong way to be Onaga. That's, that's a weakness Onaga has. Another thing is like, Onaga will complain if you do kicks repeatedly. And it's like, kicking is not even a strategy. It, it's a fun Easter egg, but it it's very specific. And I feel like this all seems to come from the, the devs having a, a weird view on how to beat Onaga. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know. That is another insane bit of misinfo. He's been the announcer since MK1. 
<laughs> okay, sure. Again, I don't I don't know why they mention that. That's not really an info reveal. I just find that funny. Funny how I'm sure they have like sort of a bio page. There's not really any info reveals. Like some of the stuff is reworded, but it's and it's not new info. So I'm already going forward. Like like here mentions like the war between chaos, order and chaos. That's not that's not wording used in the actual game, but again, it's not groundbreaking news. It's more for some fun stuff here, like apparently Kira's allies are her foes, which I guess kind of fits. Because I think she's beefing with Cabal like every ending. But her allies are Baraka, Shao Kahn, and Shang Tsung, and I'm I assume that was that that's obviously Melina's ally list. So I I assume what happened is they got it muddled up somehow. But yeah, it, it, it's quite it's quite ridiculous. I quite like the bio for Noob Smoke here, where it separates, you know, with the with the slash. You got left side is Noob, right side is Smoke. Um, the interesting, I mean, I found that realm wrong. There's a lot of misspells that thing. Sector was apparently Smoke's enemy, and. <laughs> I mean, the care one, they clearly just got stuff wrong, but that, that one feels specific. Um, so I feel like that one, you could can take that away as a bit of information. Like, maybe Sector is the one who cyber eyes smoke. I don't know. The bios, again, don't really elaborate on it. Allies with Damashi, but foes with the Dragon King, that's a funny one. And Shinook. So we have Shao Kahn, spelled K-H-A-N. And now we have Shinook. With two hours. Very good takeaway, very important. Back to some actual info to wrap the video up here. Cabal's Raging Flash, like the, the you know, runs that you spin around, is is no such time move, really. Yeah, it has a interestingly green energy around it in Deception, which is quite unique. Here had a purple, quite a strong purple as well, which is interesting. You can see it here as well. And yeah, it's just it's a non-final release. I don't really have a preference because both are pretty quirky colours, but I mean this is cool to see. The last thing here, and I feel like it could be the most significant thing, depending on how much you read into this info. Um, because I sort of have a bunch of roster theories that stem from this. But basically the reveal here is Scorpion had Darius's um arm rip fatality. We know from Ed Boon um, that Darius was the last character made for Deception. He was not around for the E3 build. He he was made after that, which would explain why they have footage of a Darius fatality going to a different character, because it would have been a fatality made before he existed. But we had arm rip for Scorpion. I mean, he, they've given Scorpion stuff like the spine rip. They've given him weird fatality, sure. But my fear is this was meant for Jax. Now Jax is basically one of the NPCs with like their whole move set. So he has more assets going on already there. But also he has like chess combat PNGs, like the little icons here. He has his own unique one. And other characters don't have that. Um it's just him, really. I think maybe Blaze as well. Um, so, I, 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 it's a bit of a leap, but I mean, based on our stuff in the files from, clearly he was, there was an idea to put him in the game. And the boss needs a special forces rep. It lacks that, so it would have made sense. Jax was also a pretty big deal. Like, if you're thinking of, Carriage from Daylight to bring over to Deception, he would have been high on the list, right? I, I'd, I'd argue he, he was a bigger deal than Sonya and, and definitely Johnny at this point. I mean, Humanic four years ago, sure, it, was, it wasn't well received, but he had his own spin off game. So, Jax would, as a high priority, make sense. Um, and just to branch off into more roster theories that aren't pretty related to the rest of this. But this is the E3 select screen. This is the Portraits, portraits Alliance, Scabbers Havoc, uh, Deception Alt. 
and I think it's all right. Um, the the cobra one doesn't really align. It, it, it's it's quite weird. Like the hair, he's got shorter hair, but like in files, I noticed because for your MKD with the silhouettes that I use in place of characters that don't really have like a, a select screen portrait if they didn't come in there, it's a deception. And maybe so we'll just use the cobra render, uh, the silhouette render, which turns out to be the one I've, I've labeled him as. I'm 99% sure at least. But the, the hair doesn't really align. It, it's much shorter hair. It's um interesting. So maybe cobra had a different hair model. Um, which honestly probably would have been better if, they, if he did have a, have a hair model if they used that I don't mind is the hair we got um, but I do mind the fucking dickheads who bring up Ken from Street Fighter all the time and I feel you gave, give him a different hairstyle you probably could have shut that down um, so I don't know what the deal there is um and yeah, here's my next furry. That's Cyrax is, is one of these guys. So again, Darius isn't on the roster because he comes later. Presumably once they merge Noob and Smoke into one slot. But that's another thing if you didn't know Noob and Smoke were one actually gonna be playable separately. They both had pole arm weapons. Uh, they had, there's a Trident and a Yari in the files. Um and they just got merged together, which is also seemingly scraps from a tag mode, uh, which is, is, is kind of quirky how that came together. I think I'm going to go for the better because the Noob Smoke is very iconic. But this is a Cyrix one, and yeah, forgive the quality is blurry. I mean, it's a 2004 E3 e, e footage, so, you know. But, like... It's very square at the top of the head, and then you can kind of see like a, a line sort of forming like a cyber mask. Um, and then you see darker shadows, presuming where the, the, the where it deepens for the eyes. I think this is Cyrax, or I guess Sector. <laughs> I suppose you could make a case for. Um, and again, I mean, I, Crazy fucking conspiracy movie that ties into why Sector's on Smoke's foe list. I don't know. Um, so, there's so sort of crazy reviews. I And I think Cyrus actually makes sense because, again, it's OIA slash Battle Forces rap. Also, he is the one Day Alliance character, but they didn't use anything from him. None of his assets are used in Deception. None of his styles, none of his special moves. I mean, the twister kicks are used, but there are characters who share special moves anyway. Um, but the, the base game did try and give distinct styles to each character. So Cyrax, you could have essentially poured him over, over, not change a thing, and he would have slid right in. Um, of course, there's the whole thing of like his balancing and whatnot. He was quite a weak character in the alliance, in terms of um, the meta. But it, it's interesting. I don't think this is concrete. I just think it's interesting. And I mean, when you look and consider who's missing, none of these are Raiden, which could also suggest that one of them is just a, a generic silhouette that's not meant to be a specific character. They just chose that because Raiden, of course, was technically a secret character alongside Liu Kang. And if you gave a silhouette with, you know, the big hat, it's going to be quite recognisable. It's going to give it away. So that could also be the case. Um, and that might be more likely. It probably is. Because um, getting a second cyborg on this roster feels a bit random. But it also would kind of make sense. I just don't. I don't know if it aligns with time thing. I mean, that being said, there is sector designs in the files. Maybe it was sector. I don't know. Um, I don't know what's going on. I said files in the crypt. He's got designs as if he it was concept to put him in the game because it, it, it's new. It's new art for sector, right? So whatever use would it have 
been involved. And of course, I mean, not involved in any of this info here, but Quan Chi was another one that we know was 100% planned. He was literally in chess combat footage. There's so much information about this scrapped realm of Nadero that he was going to be from, which I assume they replaced him with Havoc. Um, Chaos Realm feels like a replacement for that. We know Havoc came a bit later because you there was the whole thing of his design. Newton Deeb's design became Havoc's. So it's interesting. Also a select screen here for the uh, official. Um, the eye guide, this is the select screen is show. Intentionally blacking out Raiden and Liu Kang because again, they were secret characters. They weren't just regular unlockables, they were intended to be secret characters um, for this game. Also, interesting, you got the, the smoke noob, I know which I haven't seen on a select screen before. It's been in files, which yeah, that's another thing smoke noob, smoke comes before noob. Don't know if there was a narrative significance there. Probably not. Albeit that being said, with the fact Smoke was even got his own ending and he was planned to be playable at one point, there was definitely plans initially to make him not just a mindless drone. He would have had a character. Um, so that's a shame that we lost out on that. But Noob Smoke is rad. Um, but yeah, these aren't even like silhouettes. You can tell they've like edited it on. The, the squares because they sort of overlap, so they intentionally censored them. It's like this is an incomplete roster, they just censored them. Um, also, something that, that, that upsets me now that I've discovered it Havoc was going to be on the bottom row with the other newcomers, although actually, this fucks it up anyway because Jinko's not on the bottom row, so <laughs> never mind. But yeah, that's the last bit. That's the last bit. I just figured end the video off uh, a bit, a bit of conspiracy. A bit of theorizing, but a lot of interesting info here. I figured I'd share it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.